Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a great show today. I've been waiting for this show for a number of weeks. I've been able to book a very special guest on the show today. You know, when we talk about leaders in the space and leaders in the field, we always talk about entrepreneurs that really have gotten to the point where they're looked at as a go-to person in their respective field. And today's show, we brought on a leader in media. I mean, when you talk about a leader in the media space, Mr. Scott Murray's name comes up all across the country, all across the world. I mean, he is a multi Emmy Award winning television, sports anchor and broadcast journalist. And if I'm going to spend the whole 30 minutes talking about every award that Scott has won, we're going to be here just talking about the awards. I mean, he's been named the Sportscaster of the Year 17 times by various news organizations. He's been recognized, listen to this, as a living legend of journalism by the Press Club of Dallas. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I don't want to take all the time I'm going through all of his accolades. So, Scott, welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Thank you, Andy. I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'll hire you as my agent. That was wonderful. I love it. I'm honored to speak with you. I mean, it's really great to have you on the show. Of course, everybody knows about Murray Media World. You've opened that business up with your son. And of course, you have this new offering called Leadership America that's just really taking what you've done in your career and, and coalescing it into a beautiful, beautiful uh, business that's really creating champions and really has a very important social message as, as well. But before we get started, Let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet. Tell us about Leadership America, and then we'll get into it. Well, Leadership America, actually, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, Andy, when you stop and think about it with the, the world that we're all enduring right now, crazy as it might be, uh, it's, it's just uh, it's unfortunate the way things have kind of gone of late and certainly over the last couple of years, certainly with the pandemic, but uh, above and beyond that, just how people don't get along. People are not kind, courteous, and respectful to one another anymore. And that's what I was brought up to do. When, uh, when I was a, a child, lost my best friend when we were both in second grade. He died of leukemia. And I vowed then I was going to be a pediatrician, find a cure for childhood cancer. But my parents always taught me, just be kind, courteous, and respectful to, to people. That's what it's all about. And my mother used to tell me the, the trifecta, my mom and dad. You know, you, you, you take that fist, those three words that all start with the letter T. And, and, and it's truthful and, and transparent and trusting. And that's what you want in a relationship with anybody. You want somebody that's truthful, certainly transparent, and you, you got to trust them. And so that's kind of how I've tried to live my life with some of the things that my mom and dad taught me. They were my role models in life. And they were just, I lost my dad about 10 years ago. My mom is still living. And it's just, uh, it's, it's one of those things you try to do and stay focused. So I created Leadership America as a way of, it's, it's creating champions of change through a culture of civility. And what you do, Andy, there's five words that I talk about all start with the letter C, just like champion and just like change and just like civility. Courage, commitment, character, compassion, and not confrontation, but conversation. Be able to, to speak and, and, and just, I might not agree with what you have to say, Andy, but at least I am, I'm, I'm uh, kind enough and courteous and respectful enough, again, to listen to what you have to say and, and then just move on. And then I, uh, I put together a creed, if you want to, I don't want to do all the talking here for Pete's sake, but I put a creed together uh, that I, and I did this actually before the pandemic, but it certainly fits now. It's uh, the creed for America, uh, Leadership America. Living life is not about me. A purposeful life is all about we, sharing together all that we see, even though we might not always agree. Respectful and kind is forever key. Truthful and transparent is what we should be. Eradicating the anger and the hateful debris. Live not in a world where we need referees. Let us move forward in a place we foresee, diverse and inclusive for both he and she. Matters not religion nor race, faith is for thee. We must live in a world that's our home of the free. And to me, that's what it's all about. And so I share those, those other five uh, verticals that I told you about, the courage, commitment, character, et cetera. And I tell different stories about Mostly athletes, but men and women that I met along the way that kind of fit to those particular uh, words, and uh, and it's just it's just stories uh, of uh, of you know how people made a difference in the lives of those that need it most. So, 
End of conversation. (laughs) I mean, it's so powerful. I mean, it's so great. And of course, you've met so many true champions along the way in your path. I mean, everybody. I mean, when we throw out a champion's name, you've either either interviewed them or you've had dinner with them or you've spoken with them or you've interacted with them. You're friends with them. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned from these true champions that you're taking over to Leadership America and teaching, you know, corporate leaders and uh, community leaders about what it takes to be a champion, a true champion changing the world? Well, you know, I, I, I take, a, you know, everybody knows Troy Aikman, a Hall of Fame quarterback now on, on broadcasts and, and what have you. But I, I very quickly, I don't want to tell all the stories that take too much time here, but, but I, I start with Troy. It, 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 it talk about courage. Here's a guy that was the, uh, the number one draft pick in the NFL draft back in 1989. Just a couple of months prior to that, had played in the Cotton Bowl, had led UCLA over Arkansas. He was the MVP of the game. And everybody was talking about the fact that the Dallas Cowboys were uh, looking for a new owner. Were they going to be sold or was this going to be Tom Landry's new quarterback? And then all of a sudden the Cowboys are sold with Jerry Jones. That was, gosh, over 30 years ago. It was 1989, February. We broke that story. I, uh, I was most uh, honored that night uh, to, to say I had to call Tom Landry and Tech Schramm and tell them, I'm sorry, fellas. I've got some sad news to share with you. This was their life for 29 years since the Cowboys were founded in 1960. But at any rate, we move forward. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, the former uh, quarterback co- or um, uh, head coach of the uh, of, of the uh, Miami Dolphins. I'm not not Miami Dolphins, the Miami Hurricanes in the, in college football. And so he's brought in as the new head coach to replace the iconic Tom Landry. And he uh, he has a fellow named by, by the name of Steve Walsh. Well, Steve Walsh was his quarterback at the University of Miami. That's his guy. That's the guy, as I said a moment ago, he trusted. He could count on. He was transparent with. This was his guy, not Troy Aikman, even though he knew Troy Aikman was an All-American quarterback, number one guy in the draft. So we get to training camp in uh, in Thousand Oaks, California that summer, and all the media wanted to talk about is the fact that, look at this, Jimmy Johnson, the rookie head coach in the NFL, and he's and he's given all the reps to, to, to Steve Walsh. What's the story here? He's got the number one pick in the NFL draft. He's got the All-American quarterback, Troy Aikman. But one game the Cowboys won in 1989. Who was the quarterback day, that day? Steve Walsh. Aikman was injured. He was on the sidelines. So at the end of the season, Aikman's kind of going, what do I do? And so I had talked to, to Troy on a, on a couple of radio shows, and he, he told me, he said, you know, I'll be honest with you, Scott. He said, it was kind of tough. I didn't know whether I should go on and continue to play football. Um, it just, you know, I thought I was the guy. But it's relationships, and I get into that. And again, coming together. And having that trusting relationship with your head coach, so he he got with with uh, got with uh, Johnson over the over the uh, you know the summer. They became good buddies. Uh, they understood what was going on, what you know Troy needed to do, and what uh, what uh, you know Jimmy needed to do. And long story short, 1990, the Cowboys go uh, seven and nine, and then in, in 91, I think it was 13 and three. Next thing you know, 92, 93, 95, they win three Super Bowls in four years. And who's the guy? Troy Aikman. Who's the man that's leading the way? Now, granted, he's got Michael Irvin. He's got Emmett Smith. He's got a nice surrounding group. But bottom line was that was the relationship between Jimmy and Troy. And, uh, and you know, that, and that's what it's all about. You just got to stay focused and be that be that committed champion to, to, to really, you know, ta- have the courage to move forward, even though he thought, you know, what am I going to do? I love it. Wow, what a great story. And again, you have so many stories. We booked a little bit more time than usual for you today. You know, you're a very, very well sought after keynote speaker. You're a best selling author. You've published, uh, I think, two books now, Whatever It Takes, and Bring Out the Best. We have a lot of younger entrepreneurs watching the show, Scott, and, and they might be going through their entrepreneurial journey right now. Maybe they're hitting a pothole in the road. Maybe they're hitting a roadblock. Maybe they freeze in the frame. I mean, great athletes, you know, maybe early, early in their career, they have a freeze moment as well, and they get through that. So maybe you could share to the younger entrepreneurs watching the show, Scott, what it takes to get through a tough time, what it takes to sort of unfreeze from the freeze frame and keep pushing as an entrepreneur because you have so many great anecdotes and so many great stories. I'm hoping you might be able to resonate with some of the younger entrepreneurs watching the show that are having a tough time in their business. Well, I, I think the first thing I say, Andy, is, is, and this is easier said than done, but never, ever, ever give up. You can do anything you want if you don't give up. 
I'll share with you before, before I did the, the, uh, the, you know, the Leadership America and talking about champions, I had another speech that kind of plays to what, what you just asked me. It was called the Pyramid of Power. If you look at a pyramid, it's got three sides. And those three sides all represented other words. Peace, perfection, prosperity. What do we strive for in life? Three things. Peace. We all want to be at peace with ourselves in our world and just, doggone, I had a great day today. It was wonderful. Peace, perfection. We all strive for perfection. There's only one person in the, you know, in our history, the good Lord. Uh, you know, he was the only perfect one that I know of, but we all strive for perfection and be as close as we can to perfection every day and prosperity. We want to, you know, we want to make some money. We want to help others. We want to help our family. We want to the peace, perfection, prosperity. And how do you get there in that pyramid of power? Well, there are 15 little puzzle parts, five, four, three, two, till you get to the very top inside that pyramid. And they all start with the letter P. It starts with your passion. That's your dream, your goal, your vision, your desire. And all those people that you're talking about out there that have that dream and want to, you've got to work at it. So you take that passion, but it's no good unless you move forward with it and believe in yourself, respect yourself, and be yourself. All right? So you've got that passion. And then preparation, perseverance, staying positive, staying productive, staying poised, patient, prompt, polite, partnerships, knowing how to get along with people, respect each other. And then you get to... Pride. Like I just said a moment ago, be yourself, respect yourself, but believe in yourself. You can do it. And then you get to philanthropy. Philanthropy, I've often said, as I've closed radio shows, live your life as a go-getter, but share your life as a go-giver. Learn to give a little something back to help those that need a helping hand. And boy, in this world right now, you're going to tell me a, a few people out there don't need a helping hand. And then you get to the last one at the very top. Oh, I forgot principle, principles. You've got to be, you, you have to be honest. You have to be truthful. You have to have some integrity. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Nobody's going to trust you or want to be a part of you. If you can't be honest, look them in the eye and know that that's the guy I can count on. And then you get to the very top and that's your purpose. Who you are and what you are. And you take all those put together and that's your purpose. And if you want to get from that passion up to that purpose, you've got to go through all of those things. So that's what you, but throughout the whole thing, You've got to believe in yourself and know you're going to get it done. That's so powerful, Scott. And of course, throughout your life, you've become known as a person that really loves to give back. And you mentioned that in uh, in not only your books, but your, your keynote speaking. And it really resonates in everything you do. And one thing that we loved when we looked at you, what you're doing with your life is this lifting spirits and building dreams. And you love to benefit and help sick children and those in need. Where did that come from? Did that start, you know, from your mom and dad when you were younger? Where did this passion for helping others come from? Well, it came from that, that boy when we were both in second grade. My best friend died, of, died of, uh, of, of leukemia. I couldn't even say the word. I can see that right now in my, in my mind. I went to a wake. I'd never been to a wake in my, wife, in my life. And here with my mom and dad went, went to this wake. And here's my buddy, Frankie. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, this, that was it. And that just was so impactful to me. And so I learned at that time, I was just going to make a difference in this world. And uh, so it's funny how, you know, I, I started off to college to become a pediatrician. And I was driving down the road and I heard this guy on the radio say, how would you like to make millions of dollars? Travel to millions of locations. Meet millions of girls. You, too, can be a disc jockey. I said, oh, gee, that sounds like a good gig. So I pulled into the radio station with 500 other kids and applied for this job. And even though I wanted to be a pediatrician, I'm 17 years old, I'm a freshman in college. That's where I thought, wow, this sounds kind of cool. And I was basically a, a shy guy. I, I'm still kind of shy. I don't, you know, I'm just enjoy being, you know, around people and what have you. But I, uh, I just, you know, was just overcome by with what I could do with this radio gig. And so I didn't get a call for two months. I thought, well, I guess I didn't get that one. And then I got a call from a guy that I grew up listening to that Nick Nixon was his name. It's Mr. Murray there. I said, do you want my dad or do you want me? And he said, no, I think I want you. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, this is Nick Nixon. I said, I thought I recognized that voice. I grew up listening to you. He said, well, Scott, we're very impressed with uh, that, that demo that you did on the, you know, and I said, yes, sir. And he said, we'd like you to come in again and try it. Well, I'll cut to the chase. I ended up working my freshman and sophomore years in college. I was working from, from uh, one in the morning till six in the morning doing the all night show. And they called myself Doc Scott, the sound surgeon, because I was studying to be a doctor and, and you know, spinning records. So the sound surgeon, but that's how I get into television. 
and then uh, ne- never never went on to medical school after I after I, I got you know finished my uh, my degree and my uh, you know uh, major was uh, psychology. So wow. that's it. Wow. <laughs> crazy, huh? It's crazy. It's a great story. You know, you never know where life will lead and you found well, your but here's, passion. Here's the thing, Andy, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I basically switched vocation and avocation. You know, I was studying to be a doctor. And the reason I do all the nonprofit work I do now, Children's Cancer Fund with Roger Staubach and Troy Aikman over here with the Boys and Girls Club had a thing called Scott's Kids for 10 years. It was on NBC5. We go to a different child every year or every week. And, and throughout the year, we would take them to different places. This one wanted to be a cook. That's great stuff. Boom. I, I, I was doing a thing with Terry Bradshaw about, uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, just when the pandemic had just started and Terry and I were on the stage and we finished and I said, well, Terry, thanks a lot. Good to see you here in Dallas. We pull for the Cowboys, but of course we'll pull for the Steelers if they're not playing the Cowboys and he burst out laughing. That's it. We got up and we left. All of a sudden a woman down in the front's calling, Mr. Murray, Mr. Murray, have you got a minute? And Terry says, I think she wants you. Get out and see what you need. Long story short, I get down. There's a whole bunch of people around her. And she said, I just wanted to say thank you to you because you told me never to give up. I said, well, did, did we have we met before? She said, I was one of your Scots kids when I was eight years old. I said, oh, my gosh. She said, I'm 34 now. I said, oh, that's unreal. And she said, my dad was sent to prison the night before you came over and taped the show. And I had, all I had was my mom. And it was tough. And you told me I could do anything I want if I never gave up as long as I believed in myself. You said it was going to be tough, but you could do it. And I did. I said, well, what do you do now? She said, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I went, oh, my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. I gave her a big hug and everybody around applauded. I, I, you know, I actually got tears coming down my face. It was unbelievable. So we've remained friends. Uh, this is, you know, like a year and a half ago. Great gal. But uh, you never know. You never know. Gosh, you never know. And, and the beginning is never known. And there you were and you changed this young person's trajectory. And, you know, they're making a big difference in the world. And you have so many stories like that. And I love hearing those stories that could go on and on. I think I'll just bring you back another time so we can just talk about those stories of all the people that you've impacted in a positive way. Now, when you walk into a room, people know you. I mean, you know, I, I hate to use the word, but, you know, you're, you're famous. And, and so I want to know what happens with business owners. They come up and they start talking to, and of course you have this Leadership America. What's the big problem that these CEOs and leaders are having where they reach out to you or they come up to you and they say, Scott, I need to talk to you. My company, you know, there's some challenges within my company right now. I want you to come in and help us. What are some of the big problems that you're seeing from the CEOs that you're talking with in terms of their corporate culture and what they need to change? You know, it's it's uh, just people coming together and 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 working together. I think that's the biggest uh, the biggest thing. People, uh, it's I hate to use the expression "it's all about me," but like I said in the poem that I wrote, it's all about we coming together, working together as one. And and I think if if that's the they they just want people to know that they're pleased to have them there. But they've got to work and focus towards whatever the mission of the of the company is. But at the same time, you're doing you're handling your own mission as well. You're doing whatever it takes to to to, to get it right by doing it right. And uh, and just just uh, I, I can't think of anything else. That's the main thing. I do a did another show called uh, co-hosted with a gal called uh, uh, Leading the Way, Leading the Way Today. And we talk to everybody from. Oh, Doug Parker, CEO of American Airlines, Jim Lentz, CEO of Toyota, uh, Joe DePinto, CEO of 7-Eleven, all people that I knew here in this area because they they were all based here, but just good people. And it was great to hear them talk about their leadership skills and what was important to them. And that's that's what they wanted. They just wanted people that wanted to be there and were committed to the to the goal of 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 you know whatever the corporation was involved in. Um, and, and it was it was fascinating to to listen to them. Uh, and, and but they all had that same common goal. Just, uh, you know, be yourself, respect yourself, believe in yourself, move forward, represent the company in a positive way, represent yourself in the same positive way. Yeah, that's powerful. And, and talking about representing oneself in a positive way, you have, of course, Mur- Murray Media with your son. You know, you've received, you know, the Silver Circle Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. That's 
Amazing. So when you think about that award, you know, you being so ingrained in television and, and, and the arts of television, and now you've got the media company with your son. Let's talk about the media company. What do you guys specialize in? What's sort of the, the run to daylight for you and your son with Murray Media? Well, I tell you, and, I, and I'll, I'll blow my horn here for a minute because I'm most proud and very honored to, uh, to uh, you talk about the National Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences. I'm on the board here locally in the Texas, in the Southwest area. And they, I missed one board meeting. And I, I, the, the next day I got a call and they said, Scott, we're glad you weren't there yesterday because we uh, voted unanimously that we're going to create the Scott Murray Scholarship in sports broadcasting. And I said, you're kidding. So it's going to be given to a potential high school or a college high school graduate moving on to college that will be given this scholarship if they'd like to go on and pursue uh, sports broadcasting and television. So I was most honored. So we're going to be starting that this year. And, uh, and I have another uh, the sport Scott Murray scholarship fund that I was just presented with uh, about a month, a month and a half ago when I was receiving this unsung hero award. We had a big event at the Cotton Bowl. And uh, it was, you know, Fair Park, and it was really above and above and beyond. So I, I love doing stuff with uh, the military. Um, I'll, I'll blow my horn again and say I'm going to receive this Sunday. I'm receiving the first ever uh, Sam Johnson. You know, Sam Johnson, you probably recognize that name, congressman for 30 years. And he also fought for 30 years in the military and was in the Vietnam War and was a prisoner of war uh, in in. Uh, in you know solitary confinement for seven years, picture that, and then came back to the United States, back to his home, and he went ahead and, and served in, in the uh, you know in Congress for for 20, 29 years, I think it was. So for literally sixty years of his life, committed to our country, it's just unbelievable. So they have created the Sam Johnson Defender of Freedom Award, and I found out about a month ago I'm going to be the first recipient this Sunday, this weekend. So that, that's the kind of stuff. My son and I do a lot of military. Um, MC the military ball for over 30 years. I MC the, the uh, uh, Veterans Day Parade here, the opening ceremonies and what have you here in, in the Dallas area. Um, so I really enjoy that and, and have worked with a lot of military groups. And so I think what you're referring to is Murray Media. Uh, my son and I were asked to go to uh, Normandy on the 70th anniversary of D-Day. I retired from the news prematurely, did it for 30 years, but retired as a sports anchor uh, because I had a chance that my son had graduated from Baylor University. So we had a chance. He said, Dad, we ought to start a television production company. That's what we did. And that's what Murray Media is. So we do a lot of events across the country. We do a lot of but a lot of nonprofit uh, events, corporate events. But we were asked to go to uh, Pearl Harbor. I mean, uh, uh, Normandy on the 70th anniversary of D-Day. We did that. We got over there with two dozen World War II vets. We were on a bus for two weeks. We went to Germany, Luxembourg, uh, Belgium, and back to Northern France on this bus. And we would stop in the location where they had fought during World War II. And as you know, this greatest generation, all in their 90s, they don't talk much about it now. Not like, you know, they all, all got very teary-eyed and very emotional. My son shot the whole thing. I wrote it, posted it. We came back. And the, you know, the highlight of the, of the, well, not the highlight, being with them was the highlight. But on top of that, both my son and I won an Emmy for, uh, for the documentary we put together. It was the highlight of my professional career, though, to do that with my son and go to a bucket list place like Normandy, knowing what these people had endured during World War II, uh, just, just above and beyond. And because of that, Andy, we were asked to go to uh, Pearl Harbor on the 75th and do the same thing. So that, that's uh, one of the highlights of my life. Wow, what a great story, working with your son and getting the Emmy Award and spending yeah. the time with the World War II vets and going to the locations yeah. where they actually battled. I mean, what yeah. an incredibly you know, emotional ride that must have been for you. Now, Scott. And the most humble people you will ever meet in your life, Andy. Unbelievable. These guys were so just humble and just kind and respectful. Unbelievable. I love it. And of course, everyone that watches the show, they know that we support the military. And I wanted to ask you about the military and athletes, because we interview many you know, high profile CEOs and founders on the show. When we get into it a little bit, many of them have had some military experience and many of them also had some athletic experience. Not all of them, but many of them did, whether it's high school or little college, you know, even junior high school. But 
one thing we always find is that they've always brought what they learned from the military and sports into the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. endeavor. So let's talk about that a little bit. How do you see sports and the military background and experience transferring over to entrepreneurship and being a leader of a company? It's, it's structure, it's commitment. It's wanting to be the very best and make it right every single day. You sit down and do a paper, you want it to be 100% every single time. You sit down with a group, okay, this is what you do this, this, this. Everybody has a, has a role, everybody has a duty, has a job, but we come together as a team. You work as a team, you're committed, and you just, you're gonna get it done. You're gonna get it done and it's gonna be above and beyond every single time. Same thing the military, I mean, literally, they put their life on the line every single day for you and I back here at home. And so they're, they're committed, they're, they're structured. Okay, you got this, you got this covered, you got this covered. And I work with the Medal of Honor. Uh, I'm, I, one of the groups I have is the uh, uh, Medal of Honor groups, which is the highest award that can be given a military man. I was in, uh, in uh, Springfield, Missouri, about three, four months ago with Herschel Walker, who it was just, it's hard to believe, but it was uh, 40 years ago this season that he won the Heisman Trophy at the University of Georgia. And he still looks like he could play football. It's unbelievable the shape he's in. But at any rate, his commitment to, to wanting to, to make a difference, he's very involved with helping the military. And so the two of us went and had a conversation at the Bass Pro Shops and their big, uh, uh, you know, uh, event uh, that they have in Springfield and a fellow named David Bellavia, who is one of the few Medal of Honor recipients from Ar uh, Argentina, uh, not Argentina, uh, Afghanistan. Um, and so he was there and he just is a young guy, but so committed. Again, it just, it's commitment, commitment, commitment. Do whatever it takes to get it done. And uh, it, it, the, the, the message he shared. So that's, uh, it's, it's, you know, he played sports. And he said, I took the same things I learned in sports and went into the military. And the same thing, Herschel said the same thing. It just, you know, you want to stay focused and be and do whatever it takes to, to make that commitment. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. But yeah, it's, it's, it really just, does. You know, it's great. He's a great guy. We'd like to get Herschel on the show because I love to investigate sort of the mindset of the athlete that then goes into either becoming a businessman or getting into politics and what that's all about. I mean, it's a real fascinating sort of integration. Again, Scott, this has been remarkable to have you on the show. I mean, I didn't even get a chance to touch on all the awards that you've won and everything you've done throughout your life. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to slot you in for an hour because I think we could just talk about sort of the way in which you cherish life for a full hour. I mean, you're a guy that goes out and takes a bite out of the apple every single day. So, before we leave, I wanted to ask you, you know, now in your, at this point in your career, now here we are, you know, you've won all the awards and you continue to be relevant and people reach out to you for your advice and you've got, you know, the new company, uh, Leadership America. What's your why? I mean, here you are, you know, you're not, you're not uh, starting your career as, as a 17-year-old college kid, you know, as a disc jockey. Here you are down the road, down the path a little bit. What's your why? Why does Scott Murray get up every morning right now? Well, to be honest with you, Andy, I still am doing a lot of uh, a lot of things that are, are new to me. Uh, I MC or speak at hundreds of events every year. And as the uh, well, we didn't do a lot last year or the year before 20 and 21 because of the pandemic and everything was shut down. But like in 2019, I did 702 events. Now, there's only 365 days in a year, but you know, I might speak at a breakfast and then uh, maybe go off to a school and speak at a school to high school students. And then uh, maybe there's a luncheon that I have to MC. And then later in the afternoon, uh, a women's get together and they want me to speak. Maybe a black tie dinner at night. Um, it, it just so I mean, that would be four or five right there. But I enjoy that because I learn something new every day. These are all organizations that are, are now are taking place now. It might be on Alzheimer's. It might be, I emceed the Jerry Lewis Labor Day Telethon for the Muscular Dystrophy Association for 27 years on NBC5 here in, in the Dallas area. Just love that. Met kids with, with you know, with the this insidious disease, muscular dystrophy. Um, just, you know, and I, one of the stories that I share has to do with John Elway. And, and, and next time we talk, I'll share that story. It, it, it'll bring tears to everybody's eyes, but it's unbelievable. And it talks about relationships. 
And, and so I, I think the fact that I get to continue to do that and serve as a master of ceremonies or as a keynote at some of these, I learn so much more. I'm always learning. It's, it's just great to keep on learning. And, uh, and hopefully it, it keeps you young and keeps you going. <laughs> I just, I like, I like helping. I like making a difference. And so uh, if, uh, when people call, I'm, I'm there. So I love it. And you continue to make a difference and you continue to resonate and, and you're very relevant. And, you know, I speak to entrepreneurs, Scott, and they, I ask them, what's it like being an entrepreneur? And they say to me, well, it's 24-7, 365. And I'm thinking about Scott Murray's life. And I'm saying the next title of your book will be 702-365. I mean, 702 <laughs> events in 365 days for the entrepreneurs watching the show. I mean, rewind what Scott just said. I mean, that's all in. That's what it takes to be successful. Wow. I don't think I could even keep up with you, Scott. Well, and, and pe people know that I'd like to run, run, run. I mean, this has just been remarkable. I mean, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to bring oh my you gosh. back. There's just so much to unpack. I might even have to make this a series with Scott if you would even allow me to indulge myself. So, Scott, thanks so much for coming on the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. This has been fantastic. Well, you're you're very welcome, and I'm most honored to have been a part of your program. And I just uh, I can't thank you enough for your kind thoughts and anything I can do for anybody out there that might say, "Oh gosh, I'm going to be down there. I wonder if he'll can." I'm more than happy. I'm easy to find. So uh, all you have to do is go to uh, murraymedia.net and uh, I'm there.